Several methods are used to find an employee's pay, salaries, and wages are discussed in this section. In some businesses, the first step in preparing the payroll is to look at a time card. And this time card is maintained for each employee. The time card shows the dates of the pay period, the employee's name and other personal information, the days, times, and hours worked, and the total number of hours worked. The information on these cards is then transferred to a payroll ledger, a chart showing all payroll information. And from there, we can calculate the gross earnings. Gross earnings are found by taking the number of hours worked times the rate per hour. So here we have an example of R. Petty worked a total of 32.5 hours. We will multiply it by the rate to give us the gross earnings. And likewise for D. Dean had a total of 35 hours. Multiply it by the rate per hour. So every hour worked, this individual receives $8.01 for a gross earnings of $280.35. The Fair Labor Standards Act covers the majority of full-time employees in the United States. It establishes a work week of 40 hours and sets a minimum hourly wage. The law states that an overtime wage, a higher than normal wage, must be paid for all hours worked over 40 hours during a work week. Also, many companies not covered by the Fair Labor Standard Act have voluntarily followed the practice of paying time and a half, one and a half or 1.5 times the normal rate for any work over 40 hours per week. Let's look at an example. The normal pay rate is $9.18 per hour. Hours worth this week is 47 hours. Overtime, if applicable, is paid at time and a half. So of the 47 hours, 40 would be the regular work week. That's leaving us a difference of seven hours in the category of overtime. The straight pay or regular pay would be the $9.18 times the 40 hours of regular hours, that product results in a regular pay. Overtime then is time and a half. So we take the normal regular pay and multiply it by 1.5. So every hour of overtime, this worker would be receiving $13.77 per hour. Seven hours of overtime at time and a half results in an additional $96.39. Add the regular pay and overtime together will give us the gross pay for this week of work. Here we have a ledger showing hours of work during the week. For R. Petty, if you add up the total hours worked, there's 44.5 hours. D. Dean has 43 hours. Using the 40-hour standard work week established by the Fair Labor Standards Act and subtracting the 40 from the total number of hours worked, R. Petty has 4.5 hours of overtime and subtracting 40 from D. Dean leaves three hours of overtime. We're given the rates. So for gross earnings, we'll take 40 times 950 for our petty. For the time and a half, we'll take the 950 times one and a half. That'll give us our overtime wage times the number of hours of overtime they worked gives us an overtime pay of 64.13. Add regular or straight pay plus the overtime gives us the gross earnings for this individual. Similar for D. Dean, 40 hours at a 8.85 hourly rate. 
gives us $354 of straight pay and then calculating the overtime pay we can do this in all one calculation regular hour, hourly rate times one and a half or time and a half overtime pay times the number of hours of overtime which was three gives us just shy of forty dollars add regular and overtime gives us a gross pay for D Dean. Some companies pay the time and a half rate for all time worked over eight hours in any one day no matter how many hours are worked in a week. This is known as daily over time. And let's take a look at an example. On Monday, Kim works 13 hours. Her regular pay rate is $12 per hour. What is her pay on Monday if the company uses the overtime for over eight hours of work per day? She worked 13 hours. So of that, eight hours is a standard day. So eight hours at her regular pay gives her $96. And because she worked 13 hours, the difference between the eight hour regular day and 13 leaves us with five hours of overtime that we will multiply by our overtime rate. So she normally makes $12. We times that by one and a half. Her time and a half or overtime rate is $18 per hour times the five hours beyond the eight hours in the day. She has an additional $90 earned. Her gross pay then would be the sum of those two. This would be her gross earnings for one day. In this example, it asks us to determine the worker's pay if their regular pay rate is $9.90 per hour. So here we have a ledger showing the hours worked each day. Monday is over eight hours as well as Thursday over eight hours. The other remaining three days are at regular pay. So here we have a chart broken down with the difference between the regular and the remaining time which is considered overtime and paid at the higher time and a half rate for Monday as well as Thursday. So we can add the regular hours of work together and calculate what the regular pay would be. 36 hours at regular pay rate, 990, gives us a gross pay of $356.40. Then we can go back to the ledger, add up the number of hours of overtime, which is five hours, and calculate the overtime pay. We need to find what that overtime pay rate is. So we'll take the straight wages times time and a half, in other words, 1.5, Every hour of overtime receives a $14.85 rate times the number of overtime hours, five, gives us the overtime pay. And for the gross earnings for this worker for this week, we'll add those two together. The second common method of finding gross earnings uses a salary. A salary is a fixed amount given as so much per pay period. It can be monthly, which means there would be 12 paychecks per year. The co another common pay period would be semi-monthly, since there's two pay periods per month. That would mean 24 total paychecks per year. Bi-weekly is every two weeks. Given there's 52 weeks in a year, 52 divided by two means 26 paychecks per year or it could be weekly, 52 paychecks per year. They're asking us to determine equivalent salaries done based on the frequency of the pay. So we're given in this chart, semi-monthly is $1,580. That means twice a month this individual would receive this amount twice a month and 12 months, we would multiply this amount by 24 to give us our annual salary. Once we have the annual salary, we could divide that 
by 12 to give us the monthly. Or we could have doubled the semi-monthly to come up with the equivalent monthly salary. Again, once we have annual, we can determine the bi-weekly, which means every two weeks. 52 divided by 2 is 26 paychecks. So we'll divide our annual salary by 26 to give us the bi-weekly pay for this salaried worker. And to determine weekly, we can take our annual and divide it by 52, since there's 52 weeks in a year. Or we could have taken our bi-weekly and divided it by 2 to come up with the weekly.